Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Morales. I'm here at the Heart Rhythm Society Conference and I'm here with Dr. Antonio Navarrete, who is an electrophysiologist at the Indianapolis area. And we're going to be talking about the question, can AFib be cured? And so, Dr. Navarrete, you know, when patients are first diagnosed with AFib or they start thinking about doing procedures, you know, they basically, they want to fix. They want to know, they want to, can this just kind of fix AFib? They want something that going to be gone forever for the rest of their life and that can be a difficult conversation to have with patients. So how do you approach that topic of can they fit be cured? Um, that, that's a great question. I usually don't tell my patients I'm going to cure your AFib. I definitely tell them <clears throat> the reason why we do ablation now is to improve the symptoms. So they're going to feel better and they're going to have a better quality of life. In rare, rare circumstances, there are some people where they can be free of AFib forever. But the majority of patients, if you look hard enough, you're going to see atrial fibrillation. But the, the key is that they're going to have a better quality of life. They're, have, they're going to have a decrease in the AFib burden. That's usually what I tell them. And hopefully be able to decrease some of the medications. And obviously there are some people who get a procedure like fibrillation, and they have a great uh, success from it, and they feel like it's... It's gone, you know. I went. I've had years, and I haven't had anything AFib. But obviously, we both know that that doesn't mean that's the end, end story. And so, how do you counsel patient in terms of the long term management? You had a procedure done; it's worked great. You know, what are the steps to do well for years down the road? I think the key is continue to work on the uh, risk factors. Uh, patients need to make sure they still. Uh, are eating appropriately, they're treating their sleep apnea, they're treating their hypertension, um, that's key. And, um, and if they have occasional episodes that are short, not very bothersome, I'm okay with that. Um, and I don't want to start you know, uh, changing medications or uh, using new drugs. Uh, but in some circumstances, you have to go back and do another ablation if the patients are having recurrences that are you know, bothering for, for the patient. And, and I think a lot of times people don't always understand that if, if AFib comes back, especially down the road, it's not always that there was a problem with the first procedure, but just the natural progress of aging or other risk factors kind of just leads to more areas of, of AFib. So when you have a patient and doing well, do you kind of still manage them for years to come or do you kind of bring them, send them back to the referring doctors? I usually like to see them at least once a year they're doing well, um, just to check how they're doing. But I, I don't completely send them back unless the patient had a clearly other arrhythmia that was uh, triggering right. atrial fibrillation, so I feel like they were really cured. But patients with atrial fibrillation, I like to see them at least still once a year to see how they're doing. I think that's important. And on the same topic of cures is about blood thinning medication. You know, when people have a procedure and they feel like it's very successful, they assume that they don't need the blood thinners anymore, which is yet another conversation to have. So how do you manage that conversation with patients? That's a good question. I mean, many patients want to get off of uh, uh, blood thinners and ablation is not the key for that. So I usually continue following the guidelines. If the patient had a high chat bus score, I continue on anticoagulation. If the chat score is low, one, then that's when the, the problem starts. Sometimes I uh, like to monitor this patient long term with a loop recorder and see how they do. They don't have a pretty high burden of AFib, short episodes, might continue management with medications. Uh, but if they have a high chat bus score, these are patients that are going to continue oral anticoagulation unless they have a watchman device yeah, or some right, kind of other procedure right, right. to you know protect them from being in an anti-population. And you brought up the point about loop recorders and other monitors because you know people who have even a wildly successful procedure, if you have something that's recording your heart all the time, you're gonna find a few minutes of AFib, you might find 10, 15 minutes of AFib, which is a dramatic improvement versus a previous ablation, but that risk of stroke is still there and that's why that conversation about blood thinner still need, needs to be there right. in the long term. That's right. At the end is always a conversation with the patient, telling this is what we know now. Uh, we don't have enough evidence to support anticoagulation on five minutes of AFib or two minutes, but if they feel comfortable, and some patients want to take uh, oral anticoagulation because they're scared of stroke, other patients, uh, they don't want to take them and they're comfortable not to take them. So it's an individualized conversation, say this is what we know, yeah. and uh, there's definitely a risk in, in, in whatever, there's a risk taking the both thinners too, and yeah. they, they make the decision at the end, an yes. informed decision. Exactly. Well, Dr. Alvarez, thank you for taking a few minutes of time. I really appreciate you having on. Appreciate it.